Well, well, welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, to your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and no, knife collecting. Yeah, Here's your it's host, been going Jim Hurston, involved in Knife Junkie DeMarco. For lately. But anyway, 131 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm uh, co-host here, Jim, the Knife Newbie person. And I'm Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the show. The Knife Junkie Podcast. Hopefully, as you know, and if you're new to the show, this podcast is the place for knife newbies like me and Perhaps there's a few other knife noobs out there, as well as knife junkies to learn more about knives and knife collecting. Really go deep into the weeds on our Wednesday show. We talk knife life news. Uh, we uh, have some different things we discuss. We also get into uh, Bob's state of his collection, where he talks about different knives, sometimes doing reviews, sometimes talking about the process of buying, all the kind of behind the scenes stuff of uh, knife collection and uh, we would love to hear from you if you have any thoughts about his collection or share thoughts about your collection or anything else you've heard on the show. Give us a call on our listener line at 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. You know, Jim, uh, when you were just describing what the show is for, it, it really uh, it occurred to me. It's all the stuff that I want to say that my wife doesn't want to hear or will be nice and say, mm -hmm, but won't really hear. So this is for right. knife junkies, people who will just, yeah, I'll sit here and trade 15 minutes and listen to some knife talk. Yeah. Well, we try to make it uh, beneficial knife talk. We try to bring yeah. you some uh, knife life news, maybe kind of go a little bit uh, deeper into the story that uh, maybe you, you haven't heard just uh, in a cursory glance on the internet, that kind of thing. But also, uh, occasionally, we have uh, segments to our podcast, like maintenance minutes, tips, uh, uh, first tool, those kind of things, educational stuff. That We do those on a semi-regular basis. But coming up today, we're, of course, going to recap another epic Thursday Night Knives uh, video show, uh, which featured the first ever knife giveaway for the Knife Junkies Patreon. So uh, we'll announce that winner again tonight, but it was done Thursday. Uh, also in uh, Knife Life News, we've got uh, some news from Kaiser, as well as uh, Custom Knife Factory uh, Collab. And then our state of the collection, uh, uh, Bob's going to talk about the Civivi Dogma that he got from the Knife Whisperer. Also an update on the Axe Knife Throwing Target. And uh, that was this past weekend, and I think Bob is still sore from that. <laughs> <laughs> and I know everyone's been waiting for this update. So Absolutely. And then, of course, uh, Bob uh, was given a CQC-15, and he is going to pay uh, it forward with a uh, knife giveaway. So we'll uh, kind of give a little bit more about that. So, Bob, a lot to talk about again this uh, midweek. Yeah, yeah. And I feel uh, I, have to, I have to correct two things from the show notes you just read, Jim. It was indeed a super CQC-15, and I am not paying that knife forward. I am oh, paying yeah. <laughs> another knife forward because that thing, I got to hold on to that for a while. Right. Well, I thought I had made that clear, yeah, but yeah, no, good, I know. good clarification. It, it it was the greedy part of me that was uh, that that needed to make that stipulation. Yeah, well, so Thursday night knives this past week was epic, Jim. Would you say more epicer? They just more epic. They, <laughs> they they just are seem to get more epic every time. <laughs> they are building steam. You know, uh, each week I invite a co-host to come on or two, and then all of our friends show up. We have uh, a lot of people who are who are hopping on with their webcams and joining us or smartphones oh, or smartphones. Yep. Uh, we had uh, bearded gear and the knife whisperer uh, co-hosting this week. Bearded gear uh, has a new channel, six months old, some 200 videos already. And uh, just a great take, great perspective. And uh, I, I really uh, have grown to love his, uh, his videos. I say grown to love. It's not like I, I just sort of discovered him through uh through some of our other friends, like The Knife Whisperer, who also has a new channel. He came on, and uh, also Alex from Alex's Knife Box. We had Dave Everett, this old sword. We had my brother Vic show up, which was awesome, because we talked about something he made me. Kept confusing the listeners. They were <laughs> looking at those two squares on the screen saying, "Yeah, Bob's on the left with no beard, and there he is on the right with a beard. What's going on I, here? I think the real confusion came when people looked away, and they couldn't tell us apart by our voices. Really? And and neither can our father, so he was probably <laughs> confused too. He was watching, uh, Spirited Blades, and uh, you know that's Ryan and Slicey. He showed up, uh, yeah. and it was great. Even though him. he wasn't feeling well, man. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. I hope hope he's feeling better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real soon, real soon. So uh, yeah, it was a great night. Uh, we did our first Patreon giveaway, and uh, that's for the ten dollar a month gentleman junkie level. And of course. 
if you're a woman and you're listening out there, gentleman only refers to the uh, the category of knife, the gentleman, uh, and then we have the tactical, and then we have the traditional. Um, so we gentle could, person, gentle person, yeah, but but people don't <laughs> understand that as a category. So right. so please, uh, you know, feel free to give. So gentleman junkie monthly giveaway winner was Caleb Townsend. Caleb Townsend won an SR1 from Cold Steel, SR1 Lite, a uh, folding monster of a knife. And you might recognize the name Caleb Townsend. He's he's a frequent contributor to Thursday Night Knives, but also he won the Terzuola auction lot at, right after the um, the town hall. Remember, Jim? Uh, it was the knife, the book, and the right. titanium well, cap. He, he won it by being the high bidder. So <laughs> that's that's what I mean. That's yeah. what I mean. He, he he was in there the whole way, and he gave the high bid. Yeah. So he he won the knife in an auction, but he also won this randomly. You right. set up a cool little wheel. To, what was that? Something I found on the internet through uh, some of the YouTube channels I follow. They uh, I'm into reselling, of course, and uh, several of them have uh, live auction shows. Some of the uh, the the shows have uh, giveaways as part of their package, uh, their show. And instead of doing the random number generator, which is good, but you can't really see it and that kind of thing, this random roulette wheel, you know, right. it's kind of interactive. Everybody can see it spinning. Their names are there. And, you know, it, it randomly picks a winner. And then <laughs> applause and confetti blows, you know, when the winner is announced. I, I just thought it was kind of cool, something visual, since we're doing a video show on Thursday night. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was cool too. Because right, uh, we we used a random number generator uh, from random dot org, or I can't right, remember where. Right. And you just click the button, and boom, the number appears. Yeah. And you know, obviously, that process is happening lightning speed inside the computer. I like right. slowing it down and seeing, it, and you're like, oh, is it going to be? Is right, it gonna, right, who's it going right. to be? And it lands on Caleb Townsend. Yeah. There you go, man. So that was that was pretty cool. So we have another. You know, next month mm-hmm. we'll have another one. We were going to try to do the third Thursday of every month for Thursday Night Knives. Uh, that's going to be the uh, the knife giveaway. So that yeah. that's a plan, at least for right now. So if you're not yet a member of the Patreon, as Bob said, go ahead and uh, you've got time to get in for the next yeah. drawing. And uh, so we got two new ones, uh, two new patrons during Thursday Night Knives. And that was awesome. Yeah. yeah, it was really, really awesome. Two of our very good friends, Edwin uh, and Ryan, Spirited Blades and Calo PR. You know him. Uh, Edwin is is our resident uh, Emerson expert. He's got an incredible collection and a deep knowledge of all things Emerson knives. And then Ryan, you know him as Spirited Blades. He has this epic and growing collection of super custom, super high end, um, produced by all the best people right. knives out there. And um, he has introduced me to so many new makers, not new makers, makers new to me, people right. that are just not in my stratosphere. And and it was. I'm very grateful to both these guys for not only being consistent contributors and coming on and and adding to the conversation, but now they're adding funds to to make it even better. And so I greatly appreciate it to all, all right. of the patron, patrons. Thank you. Well, and if you'd like to uh, get in on it, uh, the knifechunky.com slash Patreon, the knifechunky.com slash Patreon, three different levels for you, of course, to uh, support the work of the Knife Junkie on uh, here on audio on the podcast, as well as video and and all that kind of good stuff. We've had generous people on Thursday Night Knives also super chat us money. I appreciate that too. But all that being said, just listening and just showing up and and you know leaving a thumbs up or a comment or just listening and enduring the YouTube uh, commercials if you're on YouTube uh, is thank you. Well, speaking of epic and epicer and more epic and all those kind of things, what can we do next? Well, we had the announcement Thursday night on Thursday Night Knives. We kicked off the show by announcing that Blade Show had, in fact, been canceled. Mm-hmm. Many of us were wondering, you know, kind of when it was really going to happen, because with everything going on in Atlanta, you know, I know behind the scenes we had been talking and thinking there's just no way it's going to be able to to go on this year. And so finally, they. They made the announcement that they were going to cancel Blade Show this year. We had already been chatting about doing something on Blade Show weekend if, in fact, that did occur. Yep. And we are. You want to let the cat out of the bag about what's going on? Yeah, we're we're going to have another town hall on August 8th, Saturday, August 8th at noon Eastern Standard Time. It will be a sort of marketplace, a, a show and tell 
kind of, Jim, what did you call it? I, sh- I called it a knife show and sale. Knife show and sale. But show and tell sounds pretty good. No, I like show <laughs> and sale. Sale is the, the part that, yeah. We're going to keep this in, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, it is a show and sale. This will be the Knife Town Hall show and sale edition. Uh, like I said, August 8th, Saturday, noon Eastern, uh, Eastern Standard Time. We will have knife makers uh, coming on, showing their wares. They will have 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes, and uh, have some time to talk, answer a few questions, show a couple of new knives. It is not the Blade Show, uh, and, and that's not what we're trying to do. Right, right. Um, but it is an opportunity to meet some people. That's kind of what we're all about, meeting the, meeting the people who are making these knives that you love and um, having an opportunity to, uh, to see some of their work right up close and buy it, frankly. Well, and, you know, that's, you know, that's what we had, had been talking about for several weeks. You know, if Blade Show cancels, you know, you've got all the knife junkies that had already planned to going or had wanted to go way back when it was originally scheduled and then, you know, decided not to go. So kind of that weekend was already, you know, kind of set aside for, for being there or whatever. All the knife makers, all the knife sellers, all the manufacturers that were already going to be there anyway, exhibiting, displaying. Now they don't have that that sale space right there. Now I know a lot of them are doing their own virtual sales and those kind of things, but we wanted to provide a, a free platform for knife makers to come on, show off their wares. They're already going to have all this cool stuff to show off at Blade Show. Show it off on the Knife Junkies Town Hall Knife Show and Sale, and uh, you know, should be fun. Yeah, that's right. And and uh, like you said, Jim, a, a lot of makers are doing their own. So. So, uh, yeah, we're not trying to replace, we're not trying to ex- replace them or, or do any of that. Right, it's exactly. got a great, great supplement to have a chance to not only, as you said, the, the part about m- meeting the makers, meeting the, the, the manufacturers, those kind of things. Yeah. It gives them a chance to show off their wares and, you know, put it out there for sale, but it's also that interaction, getting to meet them as well as the folks joining in the chat and coming on online into the show maybe asking a question of a maker that they've followed or a new maker that they want to learn more about. Right. Or say you are interested in that knife, but you're not exactly sure about it. So, sir, does this have a this, this, and this? Yeah, exactly. Uh, What kind of detent is it? You know, sell it to me. Ah, you know. Yeah. Not not that you really have to work hard to sell it, but yeah, show me the features and all those kind of things. And and you get to show it off right on camera. So it's kind of next best thing to being there. So, uh, you know, if you're, uh, of course, interested in knives, which, duh, you wouldn't be here if you weren't, uh, go ahead and put it on your calendar Saturday, August 8th at noon. That's going to be on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel, uh, as well as the Facebook group, uh, theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube, theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. You can uh, watch the show there. And if you are a knife maker or manufacturer, please contact Bob. Shoot him an email, bob at theknifejunkie.com. Or uh, call the listener line at 724-466-4487. Let him know your availability and go ahead and pick out a time slot. Somewhere in that 15, 20-minute uh, time slot, we'd like to get three, maybe four uh, folks on per hour to show off their wares and uh, talk about their company and their knife making. So uh, Bob at theknifejunkie.com or 724-466-4487 and uh, go ahead and uh, let him know your availability and uh, try to work out some scheduling of time for Saturday, August 8th. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. All right, back on the Knife Junkie podcast, midweek supplemental, episode number 131, kind of the middle of the show segment that we always do, the Knife Life News segment, where we dive deep into a couple of stories in the news and uh, talked about this this past week on Thursday Night Knives, Bob, and we'll try mm-hmm. to pull up a picture uh, to have in the show notes. Uh, Kaiser, they had a, um, a design contest from fans, and the uh, design day winner was uh, was announced, and we showed that off visually from the uh, Knife News story. But uh, Interesting concept from Kaiser, but also an interesting little knife, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's something we talked about on this show several months back. Kaiser started this contest for fans to design a sort of pocket tool that fell within the the two by three inch sort of uh, um, profile. And so most assumed it would be a little pry bar or, or some sort of little pocket tool, uh, non-bladed. Uh, but a gentleman from 
California, who he's a designer who goes by Mr. J, uh, designed this very cool little two by three inch uh, folding knife. And it looks kind of like a mix between a credit card and a, a dog tag. It's it's more like a dog tag knife, I guess. And he wanted to create a folding knife that people could carry anywhere in the world, including the EU and New York City and Chicago and uh, California, where he lives. And it looks like a little uh, it it fits in the in the footprint of an of an iPod, not iPod. What are those? Called? Those little earbud cases, AirPods. Oh, yeah. yeah, OK. My wife has them. They're pretty cool. They would fall on my big ears. But so they it, it fits in that little profile. Really, you can take it anywhere. It has a blade, but it has no point. Uh, it has a little bit of a tiny belly at the at the at the uh, Ricasso, uh, and it doesn't have a lock yet. They're going to work on it uh, with Mr. J Kaiser and Mr. J are going to figure out a, a little way to lock it open, uh, probably just by tension, like a like a slip joint or something like that. But uh, it's really a neat little thing. And I, I, you know, I'm not one for pry bars. I, I like EDC stuff, but I'm not into lights or pry bars. Uh, and that kind of thing. I just kind of like knives. So I was very happy to see that someone figured out how to design a folding knife and fit it into that very restricted, um, you know, uh, uh, stipulation. So is that something uh, like I know you carry a little tiny knife uh, behind your ID badge uh, at work that just kind of fits right there? Mm -hmm. Is this little something you would think about uh, pocket or ID badge or on a keychain or yeah th i mean this would for me it would be on a keychain if it could stay mm -hmm. locked shut right or or if it's thin enough and this thing i mean you can't tell from this picture it's sort of right. a two-dimensional two uh image but it looks like it could fit in a wallet rather handily you oh, know cool yeah and and last i mean talk about last ditch you know give me your wallet okay you know, <laughs> i want you to take your credit cards out for me okay all right and then you right, sure do. I'll do that <laughs> wink wink. But obviously this is not uh, it's got a tiny blade. This is not for that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's uh, it's a cool solution to a uh, problem that was leading a lot of people towards pry bar. Well, we'll have a link to that uh, story from uh, friends at Knife News that you can uh, check out this uh, this little teeny blade and uh, see what you think about the uh, Kaiser uh, fan design contest and the winner, uh, Mr. J there. Uh, Custom Knife Factory has a uh, collab yeah. with uh, Tashi Barucha, who's a Tashi person Barucha. on the uh, podcast before. Yes, yes, indeed. He designs the coolest knives. I mean, man, what style to me blends all of these great things, a, a very artistic vision, uh, some, something that's ergonomic, but also is big and, and menacing and tactical. You know, he, he kind of covers all the bases. You could get a Tashi knife and, uh, Hold it in your hand and and use it in a number of different ways. I think it's all about how you look at it. You could you could be all utility or you could be all battle. And for me, this new Tashi Barucha Custom Knife Factory knife is is sort of that. It's a big four point zero two. So it's it's a big four inch blade. It's a harpoon tanto, but. All of those things are subdued. The harpoon, which I am not a big fan of, the extra swedge, if you will, I'm not a big fan of on most knives, but it is very understated on this knife. And it's sort of perched above this really long bellied front section of the Tanto. And then there's a, uh, the straight part of the Tanto is actually slightly recurved. And then there's a handle that you've seen before. I mean, you haven't seen it before, but it's so clearly. Tashi Barucha. It's got the sort of pointy pommel and the double, uh, double finger choil up front. And what I mean by that is like one large choil that takes two fingers and the beautiful contoured back. So this knife, you look at it, you know who made it, but it's made or who designed it, I should say, but it's made by Custom Knife Factory. And, uh, you know, they are known for their exquisitely put together knives, uh, constructed knives. This thing, you look at it, Jim, you see all of the different textures on it? Mm -hmm. So this is all milled out of one solid piece of titanium. This is an integral. And you look at it, and it's got not only a, a pretty elaborate shape. Uh, I'm talking about the handle right now. All right. But it also has two patches of really finely milled knurling of, of mm -hmm. different, you know, gauges. Right. 
And then uh, all of this into one slab. It's amazing to me. I, I, so this is testimony to, um, to Custom Knife Factory's ability to put a, a complex design together. I'm sorry to interrupt. When you say inter- integral, that's, that's what that means? It's all one, one piece? Yeah, instead of uh, having two handles, uh, handle slabs, mm-hmm. and connecting them with a backspacer or barrel spacers and the pivot, that whole handle is just milled out of one solid piece. So it takes a lot more machine time. Yeah. It takes a lot more complex design in terms of uh, getting the pivot in there and and uh, all of that. I, I, I'm not going to pretend to know all the, the ins and outs of it, but it's a lot more time on a mill. It's a lot more time programming, and it's a lot more material uh I don't want to say wasted, but left on the floor. Right, exactly. Uh, question, uh, harpoon, you mentioned harpoon mm-hmm. tanto or something about harpoon. So the harpoon is the, uh, you, you see the the portion on the top that uh, dips down where you might stick your thumb, Jim, on yes. the top of the blade in the middle. So that uh, rise there is is a harpoon swedge. Oh, uh, okay. And it's very subtle on this knife, and that's why I like it. Other um, examples, uh, for more extreme examples of a har- harpoon tanto, for instance, look look at a hinderer eclipse or, or some hinderer knives that have the harpoon. They're, they're very uh, distinct sort of dorsal fins. If you Not dorsal fins. What's the fin on top? The, the top fin. Yeah, yeah, the dorsal <laughs> fin. <laughs> Sorry. Durr. Yeah, they're like dorsal fins on the back of a knife, uh, like a shark fin. And uh, this is very subtle here, and I like it that way. Um, and then you see the tanto it's it, there's a there's a very large belly in the front but it does come to a little point there yakate mm-hmm. and then there's a and please someone correct my pronunciation and then you get that uh, recurve there mm-hmm. the other beautiful thing about this is it has a it's a flipper but when it's open there's no flipper tab hanging down it's just a very subtle grade in the handle and in the blade tang that allows you to flip it cool Nice looking knife. Yep. So we'll have a link to uh, that story, of course, as well as, uh, if I can remember it, a link to uh, Tashi's uh, podcast appearance with Bob on the Knife Chunky podcast. So uh, we'll uh, we'll get to that. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Back on the Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 131, our midweek supplemental. Uh, I think this might be Bob's favorite part of the show where he gets <laughs> to uh, talk about his knives. but. Uh, uh, we try to do that in a way that you can learn something and uh, we can all have a uh, conversation, if you will, here about uh, knives. And we're going to talk about the Civivi Dogma. Uh, we're also going to talk about the Super CQC 15 and uh, Bob's Pay It Forward event, as well as uh, still recuperating from the axe knife throwing target building yeah. uh, this past weekend. But uh, let's start with the Civivi Dogma, Bob, that uh, you got from the Knife Whisperer, a new friend of the show. I did indeed. Uh, I commented on his video of this, uh, Civivi Dogma. It's a, uh, you know, it's in their usual recipe. It's D2 and G10 and uh, a very, very thinly hollow ground, you know, beautifully made and all that. Uh, but it, the looks of it really caught my eye. It's a clip point, but it's a, a very uh, sort of differently shaped clip point. And, uh, it just strummed a chord with me, especially because the handle itself uh, sort of mocks uh, the way they the way they milled the pattern into the G10. It sort of mocks a traditional knife. There's a faux bolster, and then there's uh, some some uh, jigging, like in the side of a, a case knife or something like that. And I'm a sucker for jig bone, so it just sort of all came together. I commented on the video saying, "I love that knife. Looks way cooler than the Shredder, even though it obviously shares a lot of the same DNA." And he said, oh, great. And he sent it to me. Uh, Knife Whisperer, great guy. He's been coming on the show. Definitely check out his channel. He, he has some uh, he has some great videos and some funny things to say, I got to say. Darn it, I should have commented on that video because I like the looks <laughs> of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's blue. You tend to I like know, blue. I know, that's right. You have me a blue. <laughs> so, yeah, this knife compared to the uh, compared to the Shredder, it just it just hits all the right marks. I, I think the shredder, uh, you know, I like big knives, but it's it's a little bit too big for how for the feel. And you shrink it down to the size of the of the dogma, which is only uh, a quarter inch shorter. So it's about uh, it's it's got a three and three and a half inch blade, I guess. 
I don't know. It just it just works. It just works way better in my hand. And you know, I'm I'm sort of torn about the shredder. I it's a great knife, and I feel like I should use it and and obtain a better opinion about it. But I, I just kind of wanted to get rid of it for a while. And now that I have this dogma, I will. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much, Knife Whisperer Joe Frazier. I uh, really like this knife. And in reverse grip, it's a honey. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, I'll try to, again, as I'm doing the show notes, try to remember to put a link to the Knife Whisperer's YouTube channel. If you're not yet subscribed to him, please do so. Uh, some uh, good videos that he is turning out. And I just have to say, not for nothing, Jim, Savivi and Wee Knife are, are consistently, uh, man, on point. This knife is pretty inexpensive. I think it's 40 bucks or something like that. And it's, I don't know, it, it has a very premium feel and build mm. to it. So, got to say. All right. I I feel sore for you, Bob, as you're ah, recuperating yes. from this past weekend's axe knife throwing target uh, construction. Uh, what's what's what was the progress? Get it all completed? Yeah, yeah. So last week you may have remembered uh, I was talking about I, I built the target itself out of two by fours and two by sixes, right. and it's uh, four by four, and it's uh, way heavier than I planned for. Um, so I have it uh, sort of in place, but the idea was to hang it from a pull up bar that I was. Uh, going to be putting up in the yard. So the hanging part is going to be difficult because the the um, target itself weighs a ton, but maybe that's... You have to do a bunch of pull-ups to get your strength so yeah. that you can then put the bar of the target up there. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of pulleys, you know? Oh. I think I think that's how they built the pyramids. But anyway, uh, so uh, the pull-up bar had to go up. And so I, I dug the holes last week and... Or, or over the week, I should say. Knowing that this weekend, uh, my buddy Kurt, who was uh, one of our earlier interviewees on this show, uh, came over to help me put it up. Now, I was just thinking, uh, you know, he's a big, strong guy. I'm just going to, you know, extra pair of hands because I can't do this on my own. And uh, <laughs> he came over and it incidentally, he's done this before. And I didn't know that. And uh I was going about it all wrong, Jim. I was very lucky that I invited him over to help me. Uh, and because, that he accepted. <laughs> yeah, because I could have done it and I would have finished it, but it would have been terrible and probably wouldn't have worked and mm. probably would have fallen over with me on it. So uh, we spent a good long day putting that in and got it. You know, it's in the ground. It's it's super strong and I'm excited. I'm going to start doing some pull ups. Uh, you know, I haven't done those in a while. and. Uh, hopefully figure out a way to hang the target uh so that so technically the whole thing is complete i just have to figure out how how to easily get that target up there and on and off on and off you know so that i can put it up because yeah, once you get it up there you might not want to take yeah. it down and have to re-put it back up and yeah and that would be a great excuse not to do pull-ups it's like well the target's there right now right right well uh i don't know about our listeners but i would uh enjoy seeing a picture of the uh of the uh, stuff. So if you want to get that to me, I'll put it in the show notes. I'm going to do it. And, and, and I'm going to learn how to throw knives and axes. Definitely. Like that is something now after I've done all this, I, I, I'd be really stupid not to like follow through and actually yeah. learn how to, uh, but, but in doing this, uh, in digging the holes, man, I, I used two knives in ways that are going to make most people gasp. I used them as diggers. Mm. Uh, well, in a way, <laughs> All right, so 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 two different knives. I just want to talk about real quick that I used. Uh, the first one is this three dollar bait knife that I got from Walmart because sometimes I go into Walmart and I'm like, I am not leaving here without a blade. It doesn't matter what it is, and I know that's so ridiculous, Bob. It is ridiculous. I'm talking to myself now. I just went to the fishing. Let me see what they have over in fishing. They had this cheap bait knife. It looks like a kind of like a, a knockoff Mora. And, you know, they had a thousand of them in a box. I grabbed one, paid three bucks for it. And it's been in my toolbox ever since. And uh, I just made a video of me cutting a whole bunch of cardboard with it and uh, talking about it. it's a great cardboard cutter. And uh, I used it to cut the hole um, in the grass because I wanted to hmm. you reuse that grass. And I didn't want to. Uh, oh, so I cut right. the hole and then used a pitchfork all the way around it pulled out like a perfect little plug. Mm -hmm. But using that knife, I would never use any other knife and just dig in the ground because I'd be afraid of hitting a rock. But that's what $3 knives are for. Exactly. So in uh, in one of the holes, there was a big root. So what do I do? I reach for the Condor Hudson Bay knife. 
which incidentally, uh, or coincidentally, my buddy Kurt, who helped me put this whole thing up, gave me years ago. And I use that as an outdoor knife. That Hudson Bay knife from Condor is awesome. It's such a cool knife. Uh, the Hudson Bay pattern was a sort of Bowie-esque uh, all things knife for, for trappers in the West uh, and, and in the Northwest, you know, in, in Canada. It looks like a giant Bowie knife kitchen knife. And they used it for everything from camp chores to uh, trapping, you know, to skinning, to fixing food and killing people, you know, getting in fights and all that. Like they use that knife for everything. And I have used it for everything here at the house. And uh, so I went and I, I went for the uh, I went for the root with the Hudson Bay and didn't realize that there was a giant rock underneath it. Boom. Ooh. Yeah. But it's 1095 steel. It didn't chip. It just sort of, you know, it. it it rolled over pretty, pretty kind of groaned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Why? What are you doing to me, Bob? But this is the knife that uh, my mother uh, cleaned dirt off an asphalt ground with, uh, using the blade. And so, so this blade has been through a lot. Anyway, Mom, I'm not calling you out. I know you know how to use a blade, but <laughs> that was appalling, frankly. <laughs> no, please, please cut out me calling my mom out. No, I'm going to leave it in there and see what she has to say about it. Okay. <laughs> I so love mom, you, mom. <laughs> call better. Yeah, mom, call the listener line at 724-466-4487 and uh, tell the story about Bob being appalling. <laughs> there aren't any, I swear. Oh, I'm sure there's not. <laughs> all right, all right. I've bloviated long enough about that. Uh before before we start to wrap, Jim, I just want to say that I'm very grateful to the gentleman who didn't want to be named who sent me this amazing Emerson Super CQC 15. It is incredible. He carried it without a clip in his front pocket, never used it, and it shows. It came to me brand new, seeming. And uh, he said, you know, it'd be cool if you paid it forward. So I am going to do that. And this is not an announcement of the event. It's an announcement to tell you that I'm thinking about what the event will be. But I want people to know that I'm going to do that. And the more I say that, the more it keeps me honest. Not not that I'm dishonest, but it, the more it keeps me on it. You know what? I have an idea. What's that? What we could do, what you could do, mm -hmm. once you decide about how you're going to pay it forward, you know, this gift that you got, you could do that on the Knife Town Hall on August 8th. Oh, that's a good idea. And if you are, you know, if I'm assuming you're going to pay it forward by giving away a knife. Mm -hmm. So you could do that knife giveaway on the uh, Knife Town Hall, and then folks that are actually there live would have a chance to win. That's a great idea, Jim. I like yeah. that. I'm the idea man of this see, pair. You know what I mean? This is this is how it works. You're 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 getting to see. A, this is a look inside. This is this is a Chinese lunch on a, on a, <laughs> yes. on a pre-pandemic Wednesday. Right, right. <laughs> That's our that was our normal uh, routine. We would do Chinese lunch every Wednesday and talk show and. Uh, yeah. what we're going to do and all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah, we have to do that virtually. But, yeah, I think that'd be a cool idea. And you, you would have to be uh, on watching it live uh, to be able to to yep. win whatever you're going to give away. We'll just have to figure out how to how to do that. Yeah, uh, I yeah. think there's a uh, a YouTube comment uh, picker that uh, maybe we can try to try to use. All right. Well, well, everybody, you know, th we will have more conversations like this yeah. over the next couple of weeks. We'll figure this all out. And uh so definitely stay tuned. There will be a pay it forward. And now now that we're going into it and making it uh, intricate and cool, it's going to be it's definitely going to be a good prize. Or oh, absolutely. Not, not prize, but, you know. Yeah, giveaway. And give pay away. it forward. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, the, the, the gentleman and we certainly do. And I know you appreciate his uh, generosity in giving you the super CQC 15. But as you said, he did not want to uh, get any acknowledgement or recognition from it. But, uh, you know, on behalf of Bob. You know, certainly uh, just say thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, Bob will be uh, paying it forward with a uh, knife giveaway of his own to kind of keep the uh, the knife generosity going in the knife yeah. community, which yeah. it, it really is amazing, Bob, the, uh, the the generosity among the knife community. You know, giving folks knives, sending knives to review, uh, you know, the knives you've gotten from Dirk, you know, just, yeah, you know, tremendously valuable, expensive knives. Just, yeah, sure, I'll send them to you. Take a look, review them, send them back whenever. I mean, yeah. You know what? That that makes me think like the most important thing in any uh, economy or society is trust, because without trust, oh, my gosh, imagine the chaos. 
So this is a real distillation of that. And it's, it's cool to see. And I am definitely now a beneficiary, beneficiary of that. And, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful. That was one of the goals, you know, when we started this, uh, right. I, I want more exposure to great knives and great knife people. And, right. You know, that, that has happened. Well, and, uh, if you want to, uh, of course have some exposure to the knife community, uh, get in contact with Bob at Bob at the knife com or shoot, uh, or, uh, uh, send him a, a voicemail at 724-466-4487 about the uh, Knife Town Hall, the knife show and sale that's going to be on Saturday, August 8th at noon. Uh, if you're a knife maker or manufacturer, go ahead and get in contact with Bob and uh, reserve your 15-minute, 20-minute uh, time period on that Saturday. Uh, come on and uh, show off your wares and all that kind of good stuff. And of course, don't forget to join us tomorrow night for another edition of Thursday Night Knives, our live video show that you can find on the Facebook page at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook, as well as the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And this coming Sunday, Bob, our interview show, another uh, great podcast uh, interviewing T.J. Schwartz. That's coming up Sunday. Yeah, T.J. Schwartz. Uh, he is the designer of many great knives that uh, you know of, the Arius, the Zeneda, the Perpetua, the Caligo. Uh, it was a real pleasure talking with him. He's uh, he's an interesting young guy, very accomplished, and uh, a great mind for this stuff. Yeah, and uh, talk about just making me feel worthless, you know. <laughs> <laughs> young guy, and he's done all this. It's like, oh, great, okay. We've all had our own lives, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But that'll be coming up uh, this Sunday. That'll be episode number 132 of the Knife Junkie podcast, and you'll find that on the Knife Junkies website at thenifejunkie.com as well as uh, in your favorite podcast apps, as well as on YouTube, where we post the podcast. So, Bob, uh, final word. Have you talked enough? Don't have anything else to say or just something to wrap it up with as we kind of conclude this episode? I would say don't take dull for an answer, but that that would be like me throwing a tagline. So, no, I, Jim, I don't think I have anything left to say. Okay. Have You've a fantastic it, week. I'm, I'm going I'm to make sure I record that and <laughs> snip out that. Maybe that'll be my ringtone for Bob whenever he calls me. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> All right. So for Mr. Knife Junkie, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie person, thanking you for joining us on episode number 131 of the Knife Junkie podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.